Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of Photographer's Favorites, the show where I pick five of my favorite photos from other photographers and my guest picks five of their favorite photos from another photographer. We talk about everything we love about them and show off some great photography. I'm really excited today to have my guest, Jeremy Nape. How's it going? Good. How are you doing, Ray? I'm doing really good, man. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to join me on this. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here and get to look through some of uh, the most inspiring photos that we both got yeah yeah definitely yeah that's always a fun thing isn't it to kind of slow down take a look at things you know um i'm sure yep. you can relate right we're all just so quick to just like blast through instagram and just see all the stuff that's out there right yes most definitely yeah it's it's definitely a, a hard world to live in when it's things that are taken like that rather yeah. than um, sometimes thinking about like wow the process that dives in between each shot so yeah yeah definitely. totally totally um any uh any fun photography wildlife photography for you lately um yeah um i mean there's a place that i always uh am thrilled to go to called pinochi went there recently made a vlog out of it that was uh that was really fun that was probably one of the most special places that i've gotten to go recently the nice. vermilion photos you were kind of looking at there Dude, i was just gonna say this mine. one's ridiculous love the background on that just little soft bokeh balls back there yeah well yeah done. yeah thank you very much yeah that was that was a special day because um vermilions are rare uh, kind of like a rarity in my area okay um well they are a rarity in my area yeah. Um, but, uh, anytime I'd ever seen one before in the past, um, I just could never get good shots because they're always high. They were always too high in the trees to get good shots. So it's, you know, blue or blown out yep. backgrounds and yep, yep, yep. all the twigs everywhere. And this particular day, um, there was a rarity that's been hanging out there for the past two years, every winter. And, nice. um, I was just determined this past, uh, December, like I, I got to get the right photos of this guy. Like I'm going to yeah. work hard for this. So about the third day out um, with this guy, I got finally, like there was this one specific perch that was low and very clean perch, like what you see there with the beautiful yeah. tree in the background. And I was like, I'm going to get it there eventually. And eventually it finally landed on that perch and I just snapped That's off the best. Bunch, so <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so fun. I tell everybody, I talk to people all the time about this. I see the world in perches now. I just walk through the forest. Yeah. And like, oh, that'd be a nice perch. That'd be a nice perch, you know? And you just, you dream and imagine all these, you know, amazing birds on these perches and it almost never yeah. happens. But every once in a while <laughs> you get a bird on that dream perch and you're like, I can't believe that just happened. You know? <laughs> Yeah, that is most definitely true. <laughs> it's the best. Yeah, it's the great. absolute best. Well, beautiful shot, man. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. All right. You ready to get in the show? Let's see some more uh, killer shots. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we'll start with uh, one of the first ones you chose from uh, Turgic Kulas. Just ridiculous. Yeah. This shot to me uh, is one of the first ones that, listen, I, I followed him for a while and loved his work. But when I saw this one, this was just like his first one that to me was just like, this guy is mm. on another wavelength, just took it to the next level. Yeah. Um, so what really is really cool to me is the first thing I thought about this shot when I first saw it. And it's funny cause I, I just know what it, more about it now. I thought this was sh a shot at night and they were flying mm -hmm. against the moon. Um, and what it, what I didn't realize until a while later after I think reading some comments was that he just underexposed this during the day. You know, that's, that's the sun up there just kind of being filtered through some clouds. And, uh, you know, it's so fun. I love the, the shape of turns when they're flying like that. They're so almost, uh, dinosaur like just that, that almost that pterodactyl mm -hmm. shape to them, you know, especially like these two right here. Um, mm -hmm. and it's interesting this one, if I'm not mistaken, if I really dig my eye and looks like it maybe has a fish in his beak, uh, or mm -hmm. something like that, uh, which is really cool. And then just the, uh, the color palette, those, those tones that are my favorite all, all the time, the blues and yellows, but these are real mm. subtle kind of cool blue tones and yellows there. Uh, and then just obviously that texture of the clouds. Um, the last thing that really stood out to me is it's, it's one of those images that just works flawlessly as a square composition. Uh, it just, mm -hmm. everything fits so nicely. There's almost, uh, a, a kind of encircling frame of these like warmer tone clouds against this cooler cloud in the middle there. And, uh, yeah, it yeah. just works so well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with a lot of things that you said. I had the same confusion at first. I was like, oh my gosh, how did he get the shot with the moonlight in the back? Right? And, yeah, yeah, totally. And same thing at first. And then when I found out that same thing, I was just amazed because I think that like everything you said was just spot on. Um, and I think ultimately, like, these are the types of things that I think as um, a relatively newer wildlife photographer, only being four years into it, like I am always aspiring towards is having yeah. the vision to be able to capture shots like this, because I think 
still currently I'm typically in a place where like I'm kind of trying to figure out um, how to just do good wildlife photography in general that I'm not sure. quite on the level of like like how do I make something that's completely unique and never done before yeah and um, so that really impresses me about this photo is like it's just such a unique photo like you said and it feels like it's like a moonlit like sky you know nighttime shot yeah so yeah. um yeah I, I i really love that and um i i love shots that just make you feel like you're transported to another world and totally. i think that this shot like really makes me feel like i'm almost on another planet like kind of what you're saying about the whole dinosaur thing like yeah. i think that um that's yeah a really amazing aspect of the shot and one of the reasons why it stands out to me so much and it was same thing as you where it was the first shot that i noticed of his that like really made me like whoa this guy has got a creative vision and that was the shot that made me follow him and then ever since then i've just been following him yeah 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 and ever ever, ever since then every time he shares a photo i'm just like oh i'm such a bad photographer <laughs> no i'm just yeah. kidding but he really just pushes the boundaries which is so great you know that's one of the reasons i love following him it's so very inspirational and i love what you just mentioned too about the unique factor of this. This is a photo I've never seen anything like it before and even better, I've never seen anything like it since, you know? So this is not one of those shots that can just be seen uh, for the first time by, you know, thousands of, you know, I mean, 9,000 likes on this. So how many more people even saw the photo, yeah. right? Um, so it, it's not yeah. like it can be seen by tens of thousands of people and then they all just go out and copy it. And then it's just, mm. you know, we're inundated with the same kind of shot and it's done over and over again. And that to me it just really speaks to sometimes the level of uh, difficulty and and you use the perfect word vision for a shot like this that, that uh, mm. makes it special. So yeah, yeah, I like that. All right, cool. Let's hit the next shot. There we go. Yeah, I, I, I like this image a lot when you um, kind of picked it out and showed it to me, um, you know, a few minutes ago. What I really immediately, I think, notice about it is just I love the contrast in like temperature. And I think that that's yes. like such a hard thing to do sometimes when you're trying to get like a sunset or a sunrise. I don't know which time of day this was taken. Sure. But when you're trying to get that vibe, but mixing it into like a cold temperature. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this shot did like a really good job of that. Like that's immediately one of the things that I noticed um, is that it still feels like a super cold morning, but yet yeah. it feels like you're like witnessing a sunrise or a sunset, which I think is super cool. And um, beyond that, I think that just like the kind of like the, the way that the antlers are kind of just positioned, like just the whole composition of the frame feels very like, I guess just like natural and feels very like subtly beautiful um whereas i think like so often we're always tempted to kind of like do like thirds framing or golden circle type of ratios and stuff like that um but sometimes like when you just have like a solid strong composition in combination with like just a, a solid strong animal um it just it feels good so i really like that about this photo <laughs> yeah definitely strong is a great word too that's one that really kind of jumps out at me uh that head-on pose uh direct eye contact with the subject right no sense of fear or timidness in the subject um mm. you know it's not like i feel like i'm i'm scared as if you're like is going to attack or anything but <laughs> there's just there's a sense of strength in that pose there um and it's almost uh it's almost a sense of strength against the conditions as well, you know, just against that. Yeah, I mean, just the ground entirely covered in the frost. Uh, and I, I 1000 percent agree with you that that color contrast issue, that temperature, both both physically and, uh, you know, uh, photographically, the color temperature difference between that that frosty grass and the um the deer itself and that that background and you're right it does mm. even though you, you know it's a cold morning you can just feel the warmth from that sun that's just starting to shine through <laughs> right and as soon as it hits you it's just going to warm you up kind of feeling so yeah <laughs> uh, it's it, going back to what you mentioned on the previous photo uh, photo uh, that transportation you know it just transports me right into kind of being there in that scene and uh mm. yeah it's just so well done. and that that bokeh pattern coming through the trees is just so wonderful you know oh yeah um, any further away and it all starts to just kind of blur out and get smooth any closer. It's probably too distracting. I mean, just absolutely mm -hmm. just the right distance. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's so hard to get that, what you were saying, that bokeh pattern, like perfect sometimes because it's like, you don't want too much of that twigs kind of sticks yeah. look in the background, but then sometimes it's like, it's, it's so cool to be able to capture an image like that where that actually you get like those, you know, kind of like harder bokeh that's in this photo, but yes. then like it actually turns out making a really good shot rather than just being a distraction. So yeah, that's, totally. Yep. that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure you can relate, right? How many of us, I mean, how many of our photos always end up 
not being quite right there. You know, it's usually mm -hmm. one way or the other. That's the majority of what happens. So it just makes you appreciate as a photographer how difficult it is to have all those things kind of line up that way. Yeah, most definitely. <clears throat> I love it. All right. I, I see the next name in the uh, tab already. So I know it's going to be a shot I love. Another amazingly <laughs> creative photographer, uh, Tobias Yoder. Um, have had him on this show, have had him on the, the podcast as well. And uh, just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just like you, listen, you're young too. You know, all you young guys and your, your ridiculous creativity, come on, knock it off. Give us, give us all the rest of us a chance. Uh, <laughs> no, I absolutely you're, you're love funny. seeing it. Yeah. I absolutely love seeing it. Um, so here, perfect example, just incredible creativity. Uh, one of, one of the best wide angle bird photos I've seen that I can recall, um, not only compositionally with just such a strong foreground, uh, but a really well-balanced background that fills in some of that empty space that would otherwise just be empty and still work. But I think mm -hmm. um, it's so great because we only see a portion of this tree. And if that is all we saw and the rest of this background was just kind of the smooth, mm -hmm. you know, sky and grass background, it'd be tough to imagine what the rest of this tree looks like. But now I know mm -hmm. exactly what the rest of this tree looks like. The rest of this tree mm -hmm. is just this twisted, gnarled, you know, amazing, uh, cool character tree um, above what we see in this close in focus frame. Um, uh, on top of that, I love the, the smooth nature and the roundness of everything here, but then kind of the sharp pointy angles of the bird, the head, the, the wingspan coming out like that. Incredible light. Um, just beautiful scenery and not an easy photo to get, to get a wide angle. Like, you know, I, I don't know if he says the focal length here, but this one looks pretty wide. I would guess if it's full frame, it's probably close to, you know, 24 millimeter, somewhere in that range, uh, maybe mm -hmm. 35. Um, it's close to that bird. It's really close to that bird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so just getting that, that shot uh, is just incredible. I did some, Eastern bluebird uh, in a nest cavity photography this past year and, um, you know, had similar opportunity, not quite as visually rich habitat. Uh, but regardless, I did not come up with anything nearly this creative and well executed. So Tobias rocked hmm. it on this one. Yeah, he really did. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that like, yeah, actually, the first time I, I discovered who he was was on your show. <laughs> um, nice. And ever since then, yeah, I was like, wow, this this guy's got some good stuff. And I went and checked out his Instagram, followed him. Yeah. And yeah, he's just he's got incredible vision for being even younger than me. I think he's like, I forget. I think he's like six years younger than me. And yeah, yeah it definitely makes me feel like, wow, I, I got a lot to work on. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's an incredible shot. And I think that what you mentioned, like, I, I don't even think I had the words for it before, but I think that you're exactly right in talking about how he balanced it and how he kind of revealed that certain section of, um, you know, the tree, but then actually revealed what the whole tree looked like. That's just, that's, that's an incredible thing that I think my brain was trying to process how to say, but sure. you just mentioned it. And I think that that's Jeff, definitely an amazing um, aspect about this shot. I think that for me too, like I'm a sucker for wide angle photography for sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that this is, like you said, one of the best ones that I've seen out there. I think the one thing that I would like kind of just add on to everything that you mentioned that was just so great uh, was like, I think that the colors are just phenomenal in this photo. Like, I think that a lot of times for me, like I, I feel very like impulsively, like I need to get, you know, things as much as possible during sunrise or sunset always. Yeah. Like those are always gonna result in the most beautiful colors. But with this tree swallow, there's like a white and blue mixture on him. And then in combination with the whole lake and sky scene being white and blue, and yep. then all the other colors being a neutral brown greenish, it yeah. just combines for just a beautifully meshed like painting. Like it, it literally feels like a painting to me. It of does. Like just an afternoon day of a tree swallow flying out of its like nest cavity. And it just, it's quite incredible. So I think that the, like just the, the composition, the balance, like you said, but then the, um, the color scheme of just this whole yeah. photo really catches my eye. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. This also has that, that same, you know, the golden sun is making these Browns a little bit on that orange side. Right. So again, this is now mm. three photos in a row that also kind of exhibit some of that, that warm and cool tone, uh, kind of thing working mm. together, you know, and it really, it's one of my favorite color combinations to capture, uh, in a wildlife photo and so not easy to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have coming up next. Cause I don't even know. 
Oh, there we go. A little different. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's definitely a different shot. Yeah, I, I, I think um, what I like kind of about this shot is like, I, I'm I'm very much, I think so, more so in my video work that I do, um, but I'm very much a sucker for like kind of um, just very high contrast um, feels like those yeah. those blacks and, you know, a subject standing out for that. Um, so like a lot of the music videos that I shoot, that's like a lot of the, the feels that I like to go for. But I think nice. that this image, I really like that about this shot is just immediately there's like this, this, this isolation that you feel with the subject um, that doesn't feel like it's just part of like when you're going for a bird portrait, I guess, like sometimes it can be very easy just to kind of like feel like, like feel like you need to include a lot of the landscape. But then sometimes I think it's really really unique to, when you're able to kind of just bring that back in and um, capture that. But um, I like the way that the, the kind of like the, the feathers kind of look like spikes coming off his head. Totally. I think that that's really interesting and unique. And the way that the shadows kind of shadow that background to where it feels like he's like a hedgehog or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. um, so yeah, I really like that shot. And I think it's a really unique, like um, way of being able to do one of those types of images. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, uh, I completely agree with everything you said. The, um, that that dark look to me i love how it just turns a natural setting into like what feels like a studio you know like mm. it just to me it mm -hmm. always just comes across as like studio lighting um you know and especially a lot of photographers that i work with that are maybe uh, more beginner uh they always are like oh how, what did you do to edit that how did you get it? i'm like oh no it can <laughs> be shot that way you know it's very mm. specific conditions that require it uh but it's kind of incredible that you can you know have the lighting kind of work out and the right choice of background to make uh, an image just look like that right out of camera uh, which is such a cool thing uh yeah I, I love that you mentioned hedgehog too, because yeah, this is such an area of interest. Uh, I completely agree. <laughs> and I wouldn't have uh, put that hedgehog thing together, but as soon as you said it, I'm like, Oh yeah. Like if you just, <laughs> like if you just put your hand up and like hide the bird itself. So it's just yeah. that top hat. It really <laughs> does have that vibe to it. Um, mm -hmm. And then the only other thing to add was for me is this curve that's happening in this. So we have the curve that just kind of mm. comes up right here and then almost feels like it completes and could wrap around right into the eye and the beak right there. Uh, it's such mm. a nice shape. The shadow of that same curve happens there. Like just, it's just, there's great curves happening everywhere in this image. And uh, it's such a pleasing feel in that photo when I see it. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yep. <clears throat> yep. All right, let's see what we got next. Oh, really mixing it up here, man. Dude, I love, I, <laughs> I glanced at this. So whenever you send the photos, you know, whenever my guest sends the photos in, I obviously have to get them ready and I glance at them, but I try not to look too hard because I don't want to, you know, really kind of take time with it. I want to do that on the show, just like I'm forcing mm -hmm. you to do. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but the, it, at a quick glance at this, I was like, oh, I'm going to like this one. And then I kind of left it at that. You know, I moved on. Um, but so many of these style of photos to me are, they're so hit or miss for me personally. Mm. And, and I think yeah. that's, uh, you know, certainly the case. It's a personal opinion of every photographer. You know, uh, some people may really appreciate some of the ones that just miss for me. And th for me, the ones that miss are when it's just too blurry that I can't make out a, a certain detail that should be isolated or stand out in a type of pan blur. And to me, mm. this one nails that in that in two ways. Uh, number one, I can see there's a bit of a, like a, a crest on this bird that just brings me right into the eye here. Uh, but even more interesting and creative in this one, I think is the, the sharp wing right there. Um, mm. To get that sharp wing, I mean, this bird is flying. Well, I don't know whether it was gliding or not, but usually wingtips are moving, you know. Uh, in my experience, it's always so much easier to get the head of the bird sharp because they always are really good at holding their heads stationary, even in flight. Um, yeah. But to get that wing sharp like that is so great. Uh, tying into what we've mentioned a bunch, which seems to be a pretty good theme on this episode, is color. Uh, the color palette on this is ridiculously nice. Those blues and greens like that are just so well done. And uh, like, it's uh, so cool how the motion of the bird and the color of the bird match some of the background here. Uh, but then still, yeah, it's this wing. Like this is where my attention falls. And it's not often that my attention is held by the wing of a bird. And I think that's the correct choice. <laughs> Usually yeah. it's like, Oh, I want to see that head sharper or something, or, you know, the lighting different mm -hmm. to get my eye to the head there. But, uh, this one is all about, it's all about flight. 
that's really what it is. It's all about flight and w- what's causing this bird to fly, but those wings so that my focus goes there, I think is so good. Yeah. Yeah. All that, that you shared was great. And I couldn't agree more. Like, I think for me, um, yeah. in those slow shutter shots, a lot of times it, it, it can be more difficult for me. I think just my preference, like you were saying, it's all opinion and preference mostly at the end of the day, but yeah. it can be more difficult for me to like those types of images typically too. <clears throat> but for some reason, yeah, this one just like, this one just sells every aspect of what you were saying to me. Like it just, the head is in focus, the wings are in focus and the tail feels like just this flowing, elegant tail. Yeah. Um, and it, it just really represents, I feel like the bird in an amazing type of way. Um, I feel like it's another one of those situations where it's almost like you, you feel like this is like some alien species that's just like gliding, you know, across <laughs> the, some mystical forest or something like that. Um, the colors, like you mentioned, all blends just so naturally. And I think that part of like, what um, I think sometimes I struggle with in slow shutter, uh, slow, sorry, slow shutter shots, liking as much can be, um, I think due to the angles, a lot of times that you're able to take yes. just those, those shots on. And the way that he was able to kind of get like an over overhead side angle on this, like accents, I think those parts that are most difficult to accent in those slow shutter speed shots. And um, so I really like that. And um and just like a, a fun little nugget beyond that too. This is the bird that literally got me into birding. Like this was oh, the nice. first bird that was like, like this is this is the reason why I got into wildlife photography birding in the first place when I was living in Costa Rica for a short period of time. And um, I saw this bird. I remember I was I was out um, and they always have like those birding expeditions, wildlife expeditions or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah. They can hire a guide to go. Um, and so we were out and um, I just remember seeing this bird and they're actually an incredibly like bold bird too. I don't know how familiar you, familiar I'm you are with I'm not at them. all. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're known as um, in, in the local like uh, population, they're known as like being called a silly bird because okay. um, what they do is they'll sit on their, on a branch and they'll kind of just dangle their twin feathers and kind of um, just like, just like a pendulum style um, yeah. as you're staring at them and they'll let you approach <laughs> them up to like 10 feet, like no wow. hesitation. Wow. It's incredible. Um, and they're a gorgeous bird, but seeing this bird for the first time in real life was like, whoa, birds are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Why have I not been taking pictures of them like all along? So this was the oh, bird that got so me cool. into it. And I think that, yeah, this is probably the best image I've ever seen of a blue crown momo. Like I just, I, I love that image. So yeah, oh, I love that you shared that, man. You That's shared great. great. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, it's funny. Then I spend some time reading the caption too. And, uh, you know, I always do enjoy, Surprise, surprise, right? Because I do the same thing. I love a photographer <laughs> that adds a little bit more in the caption uh, just so we can know a little bit more about it. And, you know, mentioning here that uh, he mixed some flash in there, um, mm-hmm. which to me, I love seeing because like when I hear stuff like that, it's such a callback to my portrait photography days, you know, of that's mm. like that's where I would have kind of done that thing and had done it you know, countless times. Uh, so it's neat to see. Like for me, a technique that was solely and only applied to portrait work uh, applied so <laughs> well uh, in wildlife work. Um, very inspirational for me to try to sometimes incorporate some of that stuff back in as well in my own work. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, he has some very impressive flash work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he really does. So, yeah, for anybody that's looking to see some more of that, definitely give him uh, a continued follow. Yep. Ooh, I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Put me on spot with this one. I like this one immediately. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Nice. Yeah. I mean, one of the first things that stands out to me about this photo is just immediately seeing that bokeh spot. That that's impressive. Like I feel like just um, one. (laughs) Yeah. Just a single one. And just the way that there's like, I don't know if that's grass reeds or what it is going across that either, but that's um, I feel like that just immediately almost, it feels almost like there's a moon reflection in the water and then I'm seeing like this tundra swan above it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a gorgeous image. I love that the way that, um, I think just like the color is blended. I, I really like, um, shots where, um, I mean, it, it's not like super uncommon, but I just am always a sucker for those shots that have, you know, just such a great shallow depth of field with the water yes. around, you know, the, the subject, whatever it is. So great execution there. But I think that that, that bokeh spot kind of like sells it as being like something that's unique and not just another everyday shot of the swan. Yeah. Um, and that's a that's a gorgeous way to yeah go about it i feel like i've tried to do something like that once before with a western meadowlark and mm. um turned out okay but this this is like this is like what i wish i could have gotten gotcha gotcha uh, type of feel so yeah. nice nice 
Yeah, compositionally, shots like this, I feel like are always a bit unique. They stand out to me uh, because I feel like the the instinct of most photographers and, and myself most of the time, I usually have to really consciously force myself to shoot this way is to place the bird lower in the frame and then just kind of include, you know, habitat above it uh, or in, especially in a vertical composition like this, you know, almost all the time. Uh, I think the tendency is to put more space above, uh, but you know, it can yeah. kind of, I feel like throw it off a little bit when you all of a sudden the subject's really high. And in this circumstance, there's an absolute and obvious reason why uh, that subject mm. is high there. Um, you know, this I think would work great without that bokeh down there, that single bokeh ball, because it's just nice, smooth foreground leading, just like you said, that, that clean, shallow depth of field um, foreground smoothness. But yeah, uh, such a great context of habitat is shadowed in mm. that bokeh you know like that's such a cool thing to me is that we get a taste of you know and if if anybody watching isn't familiar like why why does that exist right in there um and it's because he's shooting through a little bit of grass in the foreground there you know uh, so mm. that little bit of grass is actually mm. blocking this light of the bokeh ball from hitting the the lens and so it's basically shadowed into the lens so that's a cool thing that can happen with these bokeh balls when you're shooting backlit especially like this uh is that if you have any foreground element in any part of the the you know obstructing the lens it will be kind of you know in essence shadowed into the bokeh balls which i think is such such a cool thing to play with and and when you're when you're out there in the field and you see that happen you're like oh this is amazing uh, <laughs> and you can you can start playing with it uh and then the last little point i want to add is just the water drops on the the swan right there mm -hmm. just add so much to it just a sense of motion like it was either just you know drinking or preening or something like that it's just not not just lazily floating across like you so often see them yeah most definitely yeah i think that's awesome <laughs> All right, let's see what we got next. Oh, nice little uh, dipper. Um, great habitat shot here, just showing the habitat of that species, you know? Uh, and uh, again, let's stick with the theme here, right? Amazing color palette on this one. Uh, subtle and muted. Uh, I really like that. The soft light works really well. Um, great detail on the bird. Such, such a, a fun pose. It really shows off like the... That's the fun thing with this. This shot really shows off the the almost unique shape of this bird, like that stunted tail mm. that these dippers have, uh, and mm -hmm. the you know the wings looking like they're almost ready to just dive right back <laughs> in and start swimming underwater uh, is really mm -hmm. neat. And the the little splash, I love that the only color in the image outside of I mean the brown, which is barely you know it's off of the black and white kind of vibe that this has, is just that little bit of moss. But it's not mm -hmm. like it's not that intense smack you in the face, vibrant green moss, which can be pretty, uh, but this just kind of keeps it with that, that just muted tone. And it just gives, gives the whole image more of a kind of a peaceful feel to me. Um, just more of an understated feel, which I think works really well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. I couldn't agree with more with what you said. Um, yeah. I think that like a lot of the shots that I chose for today, I think are really like um, kind of like um, I think mostly, the right word for it might be like creatively different shots mm -hmm. um but this shot is like just an example of like having like a, more of maybe like a standard type of shot that i feel like yeah. you take of a, of a species that turns out still just as beautiful you know yep. um and so i really love that about this shot and um i feel i i really like shots that like kind of um kind of like um take you into that species world especially when yes. it's a tiny species you know um, so like when you can see like what you're saying, the moss details on that rock, um, and just the, the subtle, you know, river rivers, you know, running in the background, yeah. um, you just see those little waves and everything like that. It really feels like it takes you into like the lifestyle of like the dipper and what the dipper actually experiences in their, totally. their kind of their eyesight, you know, every day. And I love shots that are just able to do that. And I feel like this shot's able to do a great job of that. Um, just kind of getting you down in the water with it on the moss rock with it. And um, yeah, like you said, just a, a, a very gorgeous look of, you know, lighting, composition and all of that mesh all together. So I think it's definitely yeah. um, just a good quality shot. Yeah, it really does embed you in that scene, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What do you think? Of wow. That one? Yeah. Yeah. I like this one. <laughs> yeah, this this is a gorgeous shot. Is this OK? So, yeah, it is snow. Um, yes. 
Yeah, I think this is a beautiful shot. I think that it's kind of like, almost like it's kind of making me think of that idea of like how the tundra swan, it kind of like builds that that depth of yeah. field up to the species. And then it's kind of like, you know, it's at the top of the frame. Yep. I love that. I love that style <laughs> in yeah. a lot of shots. And I feel like this one does an amazing job of that with snow, you know, um, yep. probably, I don't know if it was a hill or if he's just that low to the ground yep. here. But probably a little bit of a hill I, there, I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous composition, just like a nice clean composition. But I think what's kind of cool and what sells it, I think, as opposed to like other images I may have seen like this is that the Fox is kind of like in a stance that feels very like he's on the prowl, like he's, he's, he's on the hunt. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of like observing kind of like on top of his territory. And I think I like that about how it feels like he's kind of like standing very dominantly on the top of yes. the frame and kind of just like, um, yeah, just he's he's there. Like he just feels like he's just strongly there, strongly positioned. I think that that's a great uh, quality about the shot. So, it's a great word that you use, dominant. It does have that dominant feel to it. The eye contact uh, adds to that as well. You know, ear symmetrically forward listening. Uh, it's definitely, it's certainly aware of the photographer, right? There's no, there's no surprise there that it's not like uh, it's kind of just <laughs> looking off elsewhere. It's like dead on, right down the lens there, um, mm -hmm. which is is cool. Uh, it's it's a great connecting photo from me to the subject and um yeah no need for me to reiterate everything you mentioned I completely agree love the the snow leading up to it um you know and again the color pop here helps that's one of the lovely things about shooting in snow right if you have a subject yeah. that has any color and you white out the scene uh everything is going to be just great on that all right so let's jump right into the next one mm -hmm. sticking with the snowy theme nice i like that yeah excellent <laughs> man um Going back to what you mentioned that you love the wide angle. I see why you chose this one. This is another great wide angle shot. Um, I have never seen a wide angle shot of these whooper swans over from over there in Japan. That's really cool. Yeah. Really unique. This is the first one that I've come across like that. Um, I mean, it's such a classic species for people to shoot over there. And, uh, you know, I've seen tons of beautiful images, but I've never seen one like this. I love that there's other birds coming to land in the background like that. That adds such uh, a nice element that, you know, this is not an isolated bird. They live in the flocks yeah. like that. Um, and then just showing off that habitat. I mean, doesn't get any better than that for showing off the habitat. It's so perfectly displayed back there. Uh, great use of like real soft, subtle backlight coming in or just kind of maybe from mm -hmm. the left there, just kind of, you know, uh, highlighting the neck of the bird there. And then just that, yeah. that bold, beautiful yellow bill standing out. Uh, oh, shocker. Another lo lovely yellow and blue toned image. Uh, and I just absolutely <laughs> love it. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I, that's so cool how that worked out. Um, little little pink subtle tones up there, so it shows that it's either uh, dawn or dusk, because um, you can mm -hmm. see that just wish that those are kind of the only times of the day we're really going to get those colors. And the overall blue tone of everything else just kind of fits in with that as well to just give that, you know, for me I'm going to just go with a dusk look, uh, like a, that late evening, the sun just kind of set mm. uh, vibe, and these birds are kind of returning to the lake to to rest for the evening kind of thing. Um, so I feel like it tells a story in that way. And whether that story is accurate or not, that's my story. And that's totally cool. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think that, yeah, like you said, this, this image tells a story and that's one of the things that stands out to me most about it. Um, and like you already mentioned, like wide angle, great execution of that. Um, yeah. just having the swans in the background is, um, phenomenal. I think it's like just so it just completes the image. Yeah. Like you said, and they're on um, both sides, like not even intersecting, not all clumped <laughs> on one side. It's like, uh, what framing? Perfect. Yeah. It, and the bird happened to be posing in a gorgeous pose, you know, at the moment. And yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, I think that like the two things in addition to everything you said that stand out most to me, um, well, one you already kind of mentioned, but just, I guess to elaborate on it a little bit more, is yeah. like, I think that when you have a wide angle shot, it can be hard to also get like a, an absolutely stunning landscape in it. Mm. Um, but this shot is like an image that like, I like the landscape shot without the bird. Yep. <laughs> and when you add in the bird, it's just as a, as a wildlife photographer, that is just the full package for me. Like this is yeah. about as full of a package as it gets. <laughs> um, and so I absolutely love that. I love the, the, you know, the ice, um, the frozen ice across the, the lake and then the mountains in the background. And then when you add that bird, it just sells it. So I think that's one thing for me. And then also secondly, like, I feel like 
at least for me, sometimes in, in my experience um, photographing swans, like it can be very difficult to get very pretty um, full body shots of swans. And I don't know if that's just like a, <laughs> a personal preference for me. Uh -huh. Like I always like shots with the necks of swans and stuff like that very close up. And I've liked some of the images I've been able to take like that, but I, I don't feel like I've ever taken like a really nice image of a swan that's like, you know, like a, a full body image. And I think that's gotcha. because it just feels heavy on the bottom. Mm. But I think that um, just the way that she's able to play it into the wide angle aspect. And then in, in addition to that, having such a good body positioning on this swan, like makes me feel like this whooper swan is like a gorgeous um, bird with, within itself without any of the composition behind gotcha. it or anything like that. Yeah. And um, so that's probably more of a personal preference thing, but like, yeah, um, I, I, I just kind of admire, admire her a lot for being able to capture a swan so beautifully, at least my, nice. my uh, kind of image of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fine. This is, I love these conversations uh, with other photographers on the show because you know, some of the points you made just helped me kind of contextualize and maybe flesh out some other points that I like about the photo even more. Uh, so mm -hmm. You know, and I love that you also mentioned the whole beautiful scene without the wildlife, because that's like it's something that's been mentioned on the show a bunch of times with these kinds of shots <laughs> that when you can achieve a shot that way uh, and, and then you have the wildlife placed in it so well, it's just perfect. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, you know, and, and kind of diving into that scene a little further. I love how, you know, we have the mountainous textures back there. And then it almost is like, again, it feels like little mini mountains down here with just this ice and it's all kind of roughed up and and you know, broken up in mm. certain areas and there's like mounds of it being pushed up here and over here. Uh, so I think that's kind of a neat, almost texture mirroring from the top half of the image to the bottom. And then, mm. um, uh, diving into what you were just mentioning, which, uh, is funny. It's funny that you mentioned the, the bottom heavy type, you know, look of swans because it's something I never even thought of, but now that you say it, you're totally right. They, they do have that, uh, appearance to them. Uh, and I'm wondering what you think of this. Do you think this one works better for you because the body kind of really almost blends in nicely with the snow here and then the head projects up into the sky stands out more. So the head just becomes more prominent in this image and the body kind of less prominent because it kind of fades into that, that ice back there. Do you think that's part of what makes it work for you that way? Yeah, I think that might be part of it. Um, I feel like the body does stand out much less. Yeah, like yeah. what you were saying. And I think also like the angle, um, I think also the angle in addition to that, like yeah. the angle of the body feels a little bit shifted back. Um, which it's makes angling the body away. feel a little smaller. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yep. But you still have the side profile that I love so much in Swan yes. Photos. <laughs> so yeah. it's yeah. kind of combining those two. But um, nice. I think you're That's also awesome. right in saying, saying that blend is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Ready for the last one? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's see what we got. I really like this one, so I hope you do. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. This is a nice one. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of nice uh, bokeh shots today that you chose. I noticed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There have been. Yeah. I think this is this is a cool shot. Like, I think that I really love – I think it's it's rare, I should say, when an image that doesn't even reveal necessarily like i would have never known until i read the caption this is yep. an american widgeon yep. i think it's rare when you can find a photo um where you can't identify the species but yet it still makes for a great wildlife photo um and i think that this image definitely does that job but um so i think that that's that's a cool aspect first of all but then the bokeh itself is really quite incredible in this like some of these specific bubbles in the more the bottom left bigger ones and then the top right smaller ones yeah they look like they almost have rainbows casted in them yeah <laughs> and that's yep. that's very impressive like i um i'm not even sure how that was done <laughs> um maybe you have an idea or a clue into that but i think that's pretty phenomenal and i think that also um it's cool when you're able to like there was probably i don't know if it was necessarily bubbles or maybe like a, some sort of like plant material that was kind of causing these bokehs on the water or maybe it was just ripples in the water but i think it's um really cool like when he's whoever this person was he or she uh, is able to capture something like this and kind of have the water be more than just a smooth glass of water but have yep. it be something that really is a highlight in and of itself so i really like that photo yeah yeah a highlight in and of itself is a great point that's a great way of putting it because to me this foreground in this case is just as much a star of the show as the bird um mm -hmm. and some might even see it as more of a star of the show as the than the bird uh which 
I think at times is totally okay and acceptable. And to me, this is one of those um, where, you know, uh, cool silhouette. If we just imagined it with being just like this smooth color in the foreground. Yep. Great mm-hmm. silhouette still, still stands out, but it doesn't, it doesn't pop the same. It doesn't wow me the same. Uh, as far as that rainbow colors in the bokeh, I've seen it occasionally just when, you know, it's just like the light angle reflect, refracting through those. I'm guessing it probably is some sort of bubbles kind of thing because uh, the rest of the photo and everything seems so calm. It seems like mm-hmm. it's a real calm day. I would doubt that it's totally just ripples on the water. It does feel like it's bubbles, but I, who knows, you know? Um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't really know exactly what the, the conditions were when, uh, when he shot this, but, um, yeah, just color palette is great. And, uh, I agree with you. You cannot tell the exact species, but you sure, you surely can tell it's a duck species it's waterfowl, you know? <laughs> so it's got the right shape to tell that a is a bird, which is nice. Uh, but B, you know, the, the family of bird that it is, uh, which I think is always such an important thing for me in a silhouette. Um, mm. and yeah, you know, like the yeah. more I look at this photo, it's like, yeah, the, the bird is, I would, dare say secondary in this uh but it still feels right to me it still really works um and yeah i'm always just a sucker for some really fun backlit cool bokeh shots so <laughs> um, yeah most definitely yeah. And, and even in or go ahead sorry <laughs> i was just gonna say another example of a highly framed composition so subject high in the frame that was all so what mm-hmm. were you gonna say that's true yeah um yeah i also think it's really impressive how like how I guess like dual tone, they were able to get this shot or even monotone besides like, besides the bokeh, there's virtually no other color. You're right. And that's, it's pretty impressive now that I think about that. I don't think I thought about that at first when I was seeing the shot, but now that I'm thinking about that, that's, that's impressive um, that they're able to get such a clean color scheme across the whole image. So um, I don't know how much of that was done in editing versus real life, but I mean, even regardless, it, it, it seems like there's, like in the for example above the bird um where probably the horizon line is you know yeah. whatever i don't know if that was just continuing bushes back there or if that was continuing water or whatever that was they were able to do a really good job of just getting that all yeah one single color <laughs> yep yeah it was pretty cool it must have been some very particular weather conditions so uh this is homer he's one of my uh mentorship students i work with him and so he sent mm-hmm. me some of these uh for feedback when he shot them and yeah i mean these are you know, minimally edited. I can, I can assure you that, uh, it was pretty clean out of camera. It was totally one of those shots where I'm like, damn, I'm jealous of this. You know, <laughs> I wish yeah. I had captured something <laughs> that, uh, that yeah. good and that clean out of camera. Cause I feel like some of my best backlit shots, like I got to work them in post to get them to like really shine, you know? Uh, and this was one that did not need a ton. Um, so yeah, just uh, incredible, you know, great use of location, great use of light and weather conditions and, and everything there. So, um, yeah, yeah. excellent. That's a wrap, dude. We did it. That was a great show. Yeah, thanks for having me on it, Ray. It was awesome getting to talk about them with you. And um, it's always nice to seeing what I it's always nice to see what I guess sometimes the people that you follow are inspired by. So I think that that's yeah, yeah, definitely awesome part, awesome part about the show. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, real quick before I let you go, just want to give a quick plug to your uh, to your YouTube. Um, make sure everybody kind of jumps on that and uh, gives you a follow there. That'd be great. Right. How Do you have anything yep. coming up on that? Um, I mean, yeah, I put out one video a week. I try to do like a lot of nice. different, um, types of stuff. Um, had one come out like, you know, the time actually, I think an hour before we started recording. Um, so I'm putting up at least one a week, sometimes two a week, but, um, yeah, share a lot of vlog, um, style content. Cause a lot of people like that, just kind of inspirational vlog stuff, do, yeah. um, some short film stuff in terms of like inspirational short film work. But then also more recently I've started to, I've started to talk about, um, just some deeper issues maybe, um, in terms of like culturally or my own individual growth um and kind of share i think a little bit of deeper subjects so kind of got a lot of stuff going on across the field but um really uh really ultimately my goal is just to yeah create inspire and share like you kind of see at the top there Um, that's perfect uh, man yeah excellent all right everybody so make sure you subscribe like i just did right there and uh (laughs) jeremy thank you so much for joining me man this was a blast Uh, i loved hearing your uh, thoughts and feedback and you picked some awesome photos so uh i really appreciate it and uh look forward to seeing what you shoot in the near future yep thank you so much ray have a great rest of your day all right you're welcome thank you everybody so much for joining really appreciate you guys doing that uh please help me out help us out share these videos gives us inspiration to keep these things going. I hope you enjoyed them and I'll see you next Saturday.